the best computers for music production. I'm going to specifically talk about Macs in this video, only Apple products. I don't have enough experience with Android and Microsoft, so I'm just gonna not cover that at all. So we're really focused on Apple in this video. I'm using Logic as my main DAW, but we can kind of be DAW agnostic in this video just because most digital audio workstations like Ableton FL Studio and that kind of thing require the same amount of power from a computer. So it doesn't really matter what your DAW is. We're gonna be talking about specs of Apple products, what you need if you're considering buying a new MacBook, what do you need? So how I wanna break down this video is I wanna talk about three important things you should know when you're buying a computer. And then let's look at these three things based on the four different Apple products. So these things are RAM, also known as memory, processor, and storage. So let's look at those three different specs by looking at these computers, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, and the iMac. All in all, if you're looking for a computer for music production, if you max everything out, you get the best RAM, the best storage, and the best processor, that's gonna be the best bet for music production. Music production requires so much out of a computer because it's playing things in real time, specifically software instruments and plugins. Think of like if you have 100 tracks and 50 of those tracks are vocal tracks and 20 of those tracks have auto-tune on it. That means auto-tune's running in real time and your computer's just having to calculate so many things and it's, it's, it's really stressful on the computer. Really, you need to max out the specs that we're gonna get into to get the best result out of your computer, but also just to cause you less frustration, less blockages, less pauses. Your computer's just gonna be able to keep up with you. Let's then talk about the minimums that you need if you don't wanna go and just spend five, six thousand dollars on a computer because that's really the cost of getting the most top of the line on average when it comes to Mac, five, six thousand if you want to max everything out. So what's the minimum as well? What's the, what's the other side to that if you can't afford five, six thousand dollars and not a lot of people can. So we'll talk about both sides with the these specs and these types of computers here. So let's first start with the MacBook Air. I'm going to pretend to go through the flow of buying one so we can look at the specs for the MacBook Air. So I'll click buy here and we'll go down to kind of default specs within a MacBook Air. We have two options. So we have two different processor options here. We have the eight core and we have the eight core, both M1 chips but then we have a seven core GPU and an eight core GPU. So these are the two options you have with the MacBook Air. So let's first look at RAM, so memory, which is RAM. We have eight gigabytes memory and eight gigabytes memory here. So default, both eight gigabytes. Processor, we have eight core CPU and seven core GPU, eight core CPU, eight core GPU. So this one's a bit better. And storage, 256 and 512. So this one is better. Both have the same memory. Memory is most important. When, when it comes to music production. So if you're looking to, between these two, I would just go with this one because it has eight gigabytes of memory. However, eight gigabytes of memory is the lowest possible amount of memory I would ever go in a MacBook. I wouldn't even suggest getting eight gigabytes of memory. I have used a MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of memory before when I first started out. It's okay if you're doing a small amount of tracks, but eventually your computer is gonna overheat and Logic is gonna have a lot of trouble running. So with any type of computer, when, when it comes to music production, I would suggest at minimum having 16 gigabytes of memory. So you can see here, when we just choose one of these, let's choose this one, we can go down and upgrade our memory. So we can add 16 gigabytes of memory, which is the max amount of memory you can go when it comes to an Air because of its size. Memory and RAM, which are the same thing, you cannot add this later. So you need to decide now if you want more memory. It's not like storage where you can add storage later, but memory is like hard coded into the computer. You cannot go and add more memory to the computer. You just have to buy a new computer and sell this one. So if you wanna go for a MacBook Air, I really suggest getting the 16 gigabytes of memory. Processor speed here is fine. The Apple M1 chip, that's solid. 16 gigabytes of memory. And then storage, which is the third spec. I mean, 512 gigabytes is good. If you have external storage, like you have an external hard drive, then that's fine. If you don't wanna have an external hard drive, maybe go up to two terabytes. Storage is just space where you save files. If you're going to have a lot of sample packs, if you're going to be making, you're going to be having tons of sound libraries, you want more storage because it really fills up fast, especially if you're making video. More storage, just less headaches in the future. So that's MacBook Air. That's the highest you can go with these specs. Let's go to the MacBook Pro. Let's, let's go into the, 
the 16 inch here which is the bigger of the macbook pro go to buy and here are the two options so much faster processor speeds already more storage for both of these options and you can see here we have minimum 16 gigabytes of ram so if we click this one again we can see the upgrade so with the macbook pro we have the option to upgrade processor processor is number two on the importance level when it comes to these specs i would put memory processor storage in my opinion here's where i would suggest if you are wanting to stay in music production for a long time and you see yourself really making this a career i would upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory speed this is going to be great a great speed for what's it's the max speed you can have in a macbook pro and it's going to be your fastest speed that's possible this is going to keep you fluid when you're running lots of tracks lots of software instruments and plugins i would upgrade the processor as well if you can afford it but i would say this is more of a priority again if you cannot 16 gigabytes is okay this is all just better it makes it better all right storage minimum one terabyte that's solid if you have externals you don't really need more than one terabyte on your computer. Okay, let's go to the Mac mini. Are we gonna go buy? So two different options here. It's kind of like the Air. It's also a very economical computer. Keep in mind, it only comes with this little box. You need to buy like keyboard, display, and mouse. So eight gigabytes unified memory, similar, actually exact same processor as the a MacBook Air, except this 16 core neural engine is different and 512 gigabytes of storage, that's similar. We can upgrade our memory, which I would suggest that so you guys know this now and we upgrade our storage. So very similar to the MacBook Air. I would just say, if you're gonna go with the Mac mini, just go with the Mac Air. That would be my personal opinion, just because you have to buy a display. Now, the best of all options obviously is the iMac. I say obviously just because it's the biggest, you can have bigger things, size does, matter when it comes to buying a computer and you'll see here when i go to buy we have 27 inch we have a massive um the best processor speed on the market here turbo boost up to five gigahertz don't worry about that if you don't know what that means 512 gigabytes of storage minimum and we have eight gigabytes memory configurable up to 128 gigs up to 128 gigabytes of memory logic would be so happy if you had that much memory or ableton or fl studio it doesn't matter so let's select this one and we can actually change the display change the processor this 3.8 gigahertz is fine for processor if you're like tiesto i would get 128 gigs i've never had that that amount of of memory before so i can't even talk about how fast it is i've only ever worked with a 64 gigabyte memory um but more is better usually on my internal hard drive I only have a terabyte and then i use externals because i back up different externals and i bring the externals around with me to different studios so size does matter imac is the best it comes down to imac being the best macbook pro next then mac air and then mac mini what am i using on my computer you can see here i have the macbook pro i have the 2.4 gigahertz um core intel processor i have 64 gigabytes of memory and i have a terabyte of storage here which is pretty much full and then i have a two terabyte storage external here which is full so you can see storage you you might think when you're buying a macbook wow one terabyte of storage i'll never use that yeah you will and it will be full soon and eventually you have to put stuff um somewhere else some things to keep in mind with this would be your display and the port that each computer has display being if you have an iMac you don't need to invest in a monitor if you have a Mac Air you are more limited especially if it's a 13 inch in seeing you know your DAW so that's one thing to keep in mind too obviously you can connect your computer through HDMI to a bigger monitor that's fine too that's what I do with my MacBook Pro I connect to a monitor and I use a keyboard and mouse so that's that's one display the other thing is ports Apple does make it kind of difficult with ports, mostly connecting everything through USB-C. So the iMac is the option that has the most ports. You have, I believe you have, um, well, we can actually look at the ports on the MacBook, on the iMac, because I'm not actually sure what the ports are now on the iMac, but I would assume if we just look over here behind it. Yeah, we have USB, looks like four USB, an SD card, an Ethernet, and two USB-C and a headphones. So obviously the best one when it comes to ports. Mac mini when it comes to ports, I'm not sure. We can quickly check just by looking at the pictures. There's the Mac mini. Oh, we have two USB-C, HDMI, two USB ethernet, and these little switches there, which I'm not sure. So pretty good for ports as well. Um, better than the uh, MacBook 
Air and MacBook Pro, to be honest. MacBook Pro has four USB-C and a MacBook Air, I believe, only has two USB-C. So ports are a thing. Again, you can you can work around all this stuff by getting dongles and that kind of thing. I have lots of dongles running out of my MacBook Pro. Everyone does it. So final recap for best laptops, MacBooks for music production would be looking at the RAM, the processor and the storage before you get the thing you wanna buy. Because remember, you cannot upgrade RAM. Get a good RAM speed on whatever computer you're gonna buy. Try to upgrade the storage if you can, because it really goes fast. If you can afford upgrading the processor, upgrade it, but don't. I would say that's your last thing to upgrade before memory. So memory, processor, storage, those are the things you, three things you need to look at. Size does matter when it comes to choosing a computer. The bigger, the better. iMacs are the best thing you can buy. But again, there are different things to come into play. Who wants an iMac if you're going to be tra traveling around to different studios? That's why I like the MacBook Pro. You get the best, most powerful computer that is a uh, um, allows you to just travel around and work remotely. I can be in a coffee shop, have 64 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage and the best processor, and I've just got my headphones and it's fine. Nothing, no fans are running at all. This is all my subjective opinion, by the way. Let me know in the comments what computer you use because I'm curious to know are you using a MacBook Air and it's working fine for you? Let me know. Let me know the pros and cons of what kind of computer you're using if you're using a MacBook or something else. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.